All right, y'all, here we go. Episode nine, as you can see, we're working on the visual setup. I got my boy James right alongside me, man. And what is it? It's Saturday. If you guys hear some kids in the background, we're about to have a little family cookout. I got, you know, nephew over here and his family. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. Um, last night, man, it, it, was, it, was, it was really devastating to me, man. So I know you, you said you didn't know what exactly was going down. Steph Curry sprained his, his first game back, sprains his left knee. JaVale McGee crashes down on him and buckles his knee in the third quarter after scoring 29 points in 25 minutes and and get goes to the goes to the bench covers up is crying because he know it because he knows like it's not out of pain but like oh, are you serious type of moment mm -hmm. heads to the locker room stops halfway curls over in pain waits for someone to help him to the locker room arena's dead silent warriors go on to win nick young's doing nick young things just throwing shit in and um I had a hard time sleeping, man. It really, and I hate to sound selfish, but it's almost, it, it affects me like financially as well at this point. You know what I'm saying? Like sure. ultimately, first I felt bad for myself. And then I felt bad for Steph. Then I started to worry like, well, man, man my numbers and you know, I mean, I need to eat. Mm -hmm. And um, so this morning, man, I was worked up. Like I said, like I'm, I'm also trying this new thing called, uh, what is it? Intermittent fasting. So my yeah, diet's changed. About that. Yeah, my diet's changed a little bit. And this morning, I was so worked up, man. I was on the toilet, bro. I couldn't. I couldn't let nothing out, bro. Like <laughs> I, I, I was leant over. I'm so backed up and worried about this situation. What in the fuck is this? <laughs> and now they're. Oh, it's the mouse. Well, we're gonna have to keep it rolling. But okay. I back back to back to the story, man. Like I don't know so if you were backed up like that. I, I, I was yeah. You I was pushing hell I, I, Dude, I, I was leaned up and, and and just in in pain. And it's funny because it's the mental thing. I'm usually a regular fella, if you feel me. <laughs> and um and and I was just that much stressed about the situation. And I was leaned and I was in search of like a clean break. So I was there for a long time. And uh, yeah, I know this is graphic, but as I got up, my entire right knee down was numb and i almost fell into the shower rail oh, and I, and i and i'm and this is solely based off basically the steph curry injury yeah. so that's how devastating it was to me i see you felt his pain <laughs> like not only mentally but physically that's insane you had talked about how javelle is an excellent player but it's kind of reckless at some times it, it's disappointing i was talking to somebody earlier at this picnic where i was at he had played some college football for the gophers out in minnesota and unfortunately his whole arm was messed up and he was having a great season. He said he had like 2,200 yards, but what happens is people spear, they come in uncontrolled, the play's already over mm -hmm. and they come in and just unnecessarily make mistakes. I know Jabil had no intention to do that, but he's just such a big body, man. So you're saying Steph was really getting it in before? He looked good. He was a little tentative, you know, early on, but he looked like he was really, he worked up a lather. He t did his normal third quarter thing. And JaVale and the play, those of, you know, everybody I think has seen it at this point. Visually, I'll throw it up on there or behind us. You see the new look, right? But it, the thing was, he was recklessly, it was a look at me jump, as uh, mm -hmm. Tim Kawakami called it. Yes. You know, there was no real purpose behind it. And I was noticing that watching JaVale. You know, sometimes whenever you're out there, I notice him doing this motion a lot at times where you question why. Just because he knows he can jump, mm -hmm. a lot of times he'll be under the rim boxing somebody out, and I'll see him call for the ball, like, yo, man, throw it up, almost like a receiver. But the quarterbacks are like, nah, there's two people on. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? So I, I see him with that look at me. The Des Bryant, I'm always open. Oh. I'm always open. Just throw it up. Man, how come? Did you hear this fool's statements recently? He said he's going to start working on his routes. This nigga right here, that's insane. That's insulting. You've been in the league. It's too late. Yeah, it's like, too, it's too, it's, start working on routes. it's too late for all Beasley's that. Because Beasley's better at running routes than you? And, and, and it's, yeah, it's, it's the, the I, I speak on it often. It's the double-edged sword of talent. Sure. And, and a guy that can get to the, all the way to, to the pros and be a star on talent, mm -hmm. it's very unlikely that they're going to put in work. And that's when you get the LeBrons and the Kobe's. Okay, so with his knee in that condition, What's the perspectives? What are they saying? So it's a grade two MCL sprain, which is, you know, six to eight weeks. And the playoffs start in approximately three weeks. So my, my, my train of thought is the first round. And KD had a very similar injury. A lot is being spoken about Zaza and JaVale, both guys that are just, they have no spatial awareness. They're just reckless. And now it's taken out two of our MVPs in consecutive years. Hmm. So... I think it's going to be a second round, but how healthy will he be? KD came back like in game shape. We gave KD six weeks, but KD's a different beast. We all know that because mm -hmm. he's still dealing with the ankles, but it definitely is a chink in the armor. I think mm -hmm. Quinn Cook, 
this new point guard from Duke is really he's really doing things. He's they're gonna have to open up a roster spot, mm -hmm. and he's going to. I think the silver lining is we're gonna see him maturate and continue to grow. And you know, I, if they can get through the first round, and we'll talk a little more about that later, the the potential opponents. I don't see any reason why he can't come back, and maybe the rest could somehow do him some good. We all know that this four year run has been taxing on a guy. You look at the all, you know, let's let's go Jordan, Magic Johnson, LeBron, obviously, um, even Shaq in, in these runs, these guys that have had these runs, even look at D Wade to a lesser extent, these guys are built differently, man. And what I mean is they're just much more physical and muscular. You know what I'm saying? So but I think that his lean built may help his recovery time. Um what I, what I also wanted to get into was Kyrie Irving is having knee surgery, and he's out three to six weeks. It's supposed to be like a, a non-invasive surgery for whatever that means. That's a very uh, kind of, you know, oxymoron, right? Sure, a non-invasive non -invasive. surgery. <laughs> but um, so it'll be interesting. Boston's been absolutely decimated by injury, and they, their title hopes for this year are kind of really just sputtered out. Gordon Hayward, obviously. Jalen Brown has concussion problems. Marcus Smart's out for the year. So they're they're kind of a mess. And it's really Toronto and Cleveland, I think. But um, I don't know if you heard, man. And, I, and, and those of you that have been checking out the pod, I know we're kind of smoothening things out and we're not getting, you know, we're, we're still figuring it out. But if you've been paying attention, I told y'all about the Kawhi shit. I yeah, told y'all. You, you did. At first it sounded a little weird to me, but it, it happened. They, they had gotten Ginobili. And he was looking very reflective and having to come to grips with the fact that, you know, his chances to shine are going to limit. Just like you felt whenever Steph went down, his teammates had a uh, tinge of that. But LaMarcus Aldridge, we'll talk about him here in a little bit, but he's been doing his share to, to help out. But it won't be enough by any means. But. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Tony, so there's contract, contradict, contradicting, con contradicting reports. Mm -hmm. I, I got that out. Mm -hmm. That basically the Spurs, Wojnarowski and others are reporting that there was a heated players only meeting and they kind of called Kawhi the out. Spurs? Yeah. Dang, and then, and, and yeah, that. they usually keep it in house. And then Danny Green and other players and the beat writers for the Spurs kind of were like, no, 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 that's not all, what all happened. It was, it was all good. Mm -hmm. And um, so the bottom line is, is Tony Parker did come out and say, you, you heard the man who quote, but Parker was like, I had, I'm, I dealt with the same injury. Only it was a hundred times worse. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it, it is what it is at this point. You know, I just I think that they're done, and I think that that's a potential first round opponent that you'd want to see at this point. Mm -hmm. They just don't have the athletes anymore. They they really don't, man. And I, that interests me. We've gone back to the family studies idea when you have to have an intervention because a, a players only thing reminds you of an intervention. Mm -hmm. you, all of a it, that's what it is. Yeah. It is like something mm -hmm. has gone awry. We need to talk and figure this out. I wonder what Kawhi's response may be. I see him kind of having more of a quiet, you know, my performance is what it is. I'm not trying to jeopardize my body. Like, I, you know, I, I've been here. I've done mm -hmm. my role. Mm -hmm. Y'all know how I get down. So really bringing this to me is kind of y'all being upset that, Y'all can't it, piggyback off of me. Or it, it kind of, so kind of like a Kobe Bryant, I'm not shooting it in the second half type of thing, maybe it, years ago with the Lakers, where what it, uh, apparently like within the players only meeting, they presented Kawhi with a pinata with a big old dong and these little balls. <laughs> and, and it was just, it was just, a, no, I, always, I always have to get dong humor in there, but no, I, I don't, I don't just, you, I, you made me think of intervention. It was just like, basically, are they yeah. saying, look, dude, you're being a punk. You're being selfish. Yeah. What time yeah. is it? Mm -hmm. Um, we, the, whenever somebody goes to directly, it was worse for me, or you should be able to deal with it, you know, yeah. or suck it up, eat some soup. Y'all remember that one movie? Put some tuss on that bitch. <laughs> right, that dude gets shot. I think it's paid, paid in full. Paid right? in full, right. Where the homie gets shot, and then grimy-ass Cameron tells him, eat some soup. That was always <laughs> whack, <whacked. laughs> He got shot. He was having a pneumonia. Like. Cameron was whack, man. I know he had a movement, but his, let's face it, his rhymes Dip were. Set. Yeah, it was very yeah. limited. Hey, I watched the hey. dip set the other day. Foo foo, real. boo boo, a choo choo. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but man. Your but your cousin wasn't a piece of pizza. It's just whatever. But uh, I did for my patrons, man. I, I, it was it was a very nice change of pace. And moving forward, I've realized that, you know, like this run, what this Steph thing did to me was, you know, obviously this is my job now, man. And I take it very seriously. But I'm also. I've, it, we, we're in this run it's not going to be forever mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying in four or five years from now like the the losses may come a lot a lot more right and it's not going to always be this dominant run mm -hmm. i got an opportunity to cover the blazers and rockets game mm -hmm. um tuesday night and chris paul pulled a hamstring mm 
And yeah. I don't know if I don't know, you know, from me, I don't know if you have, but when we were working together, I went down and I, it was before, before work, I was at, I was at the gym and I went down into a low squat okay. and I, and I wasn't warm enough. And I, it was like an ass to the ass to the grass squat, like a deep one, yeah. just like 135. Uh -huh. And I didn't feel it at the time, but then my left hammy seized up on me. Yeah. That bothers me to this day. Yes. Like I, it, it will, it will bite me. And I play through it. I've learned to play through it and learn like what not to do. Mm -hmm. But hammies are so sensitive. And there was something very telling with Chris Paul when it happened. It was the last play of the game. He was at the free throw line and he was shaking his head. And he went to the scores table. He put his head down for like 30 seconds. It was like he knew in the back of his mind, like, fuck, this is going to bite me all playoffs. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Same thing. My knee got messed up because I ran off the side of a curb. And also another thing, my wife, I was getting into the house and she pulled the door at the same time. So my key ended up bending. And it kind of made me think in relationship to rehab, you can't just bend it back the other direction. Like that's why hamstrings are so challenging because with the knee, you can contort it and kind of go and just, you know, push it back mm -hmm. in the spot. But with your hamstring, since it's so big, you can't really lift it back this way enough to stretch it out. Mm -hmm. There's no real backwards mm -hmm. movement. You, you no, yeah, it's, yeah, it's only it's on a band, and I was explaining it to to Amaya as well. Um, also, I think that there's a lot of fibers in it. I, I don't know that you know what I mean. I think it's a thicker in a in a bigger one. But like, I took a rubber band, and that's where my my hamstrings and my posterior chain are super tight, and that's why I have bounce. That's why I have hop. But it's give and take. It also means that my shit is ready to mm -hmm. to to stretch or snap, man. Mm -hmm. But so I noticed that um, a couple takeaways I didn't. I had a breakdown on my Patreon. I was going to ask you about that because what I was noticing about CP3 is his three ball has improved and he's definitely watching Harden with that dribble between the legs 15 times. And he's, he's, he, really he, he's gotten the green light to do it, right? Yeah. And now I think at his age, he no longer really wants to get to the rim. If you yeah. pay attention, because I'm always talking about this when I'm coaching or even just breaking down videos, take a, what do what does a guy want? What do you want? You know what I'm saying? And Chris Paul used to want to probe and penetrate, get into the paint and kick it out, right? Now he he kind of wants the step back, just like Harden. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, he's he's shooting it to his credit very well. It's kind of crazy, though. I know it's a mute point, but think about a guitar or a pool player. Some people geek out on how, the, even if they make the shot, how the ball spins back to them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What I notice about CP, and maybe it's that injury, everything, his movements look hard and squared. Hmm. They don't seem necessarily real fluid. He mm -hmm. seems kind of chesty, and I think since he's shorter, his posture is more up like this. He's got the and I was say it with even, your chest. Even the way he shoots, like the ball looks hmm. sort of heavy. It's not. It's not necessarily a pretty game. I think his handle is pretty, yeah. and his passing is pretty. But mm -hmm. I just think that that's something to watch because I, mm -hmm. I I do want to remind Warrior fans. And again, man, I would like I said I couldn't even shit this morning, <laughs> and I know that was too much information. <laughs> but you know, your boy trying to be funny and keep it real at the same time. So I had to share that story. But I'm just saying that, you know, the world is falling or the, the sky is falling gloom and doom from the Warrior fans perspective. Let's keep it a buck. By the time the Western Conference finals roll around, if the Warriors and Rockets are there, neither team will probably have a full roster. There's a lot of basketball to be played. And if you go back, a perfect example was that Lakers uh, Celtics 30 for 30. I don't know if you caught that. It was like a two hour, three hour thing. If you look at the history of the NBA, injuries really dominate the storyline of and of of championships mm -hmm. guys fighting and playing through them guys getting taken out so the, the, yes the warriors were dealt a blow but the, the, let's just see where things fall when it's time to push all the chips on the table mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um now I, I i and you being in the football world i think that you've you have probably and, and just a bigger dude you just be hitting the weights but mm -hmm. did you hear this story that lebron gained seven pounds in a playoff game. Yeah, I heard that. I think it was on the radio I was listening to, and it was crazy to me. How does that even happen? We've all worked out, and you, you dehydrate. You dehydrate. That's amazing to me. Like, I, even if you run, even bodybuilders don't do that. Like, I would take your biggest, most muscular bodybuilder and have them go lift weights and do their normal routine, eating mm -hmm. tons of horse meat and crazy shit that they mm -hmm. eat. And I'm even that dude, I mean, because they'd love that. A bodybuilder would love to gain seven pounds in one sitting. So right. it's very abnormal that that's happening yeah, there has to be it, something dude is in his and i and i i people know where i stand on this i i think that ped use is absolutely being done in, in all mm -hmm. sports that can get away with it mm -hmm. and i really don't have a problem with it 
I really don't because I think Le- we've seen LeBron's longevity, mm-hmm. and I think that yes, it it may boost and enhance some of the performance and the athleticism. Sure. But I think overall, what it does is it lets you play longer and harder. Yes, sir. That's what steroids are, honestly do. They help your re- muscles recover more quickly. Yeah. Because I saw a lot of dudes back in high school in Texas, like, yeah, let's take these steroids, and they took them over the summers. So this is like eleventh grade, tenth grade, and they came back the next year, hella whack. Because they figured that this pill or this shot is going to make them better. So mm-hmm. I think with it, when it comes to game enhancing drugs, you know LeBron's already the man, so that that doesn't bother me. You know, what I'm saying? right? If it's like Barry somebody, Bonds; he was already a Hall of Fame player. Right. So, but even still, it might if you're a dude who's trying to do it the right way or whatever that might be. Mm-hmm. And from the statisticians, that is somewhat unfair to put this guy that's supercharged. It's like right. racing. Right. And somebody has like a turbo, and you just. Have I like, think. I think in baseball. I think that it gives more of an advantage and I think it gives more of an advantage to the pitcher because if you, I mean, cause you at a starting pitcher, a guy, a pitch count and then five days rest or whatever it may be. If you just think about the built-in advantage of that, if you want to talk about it, obviously it helped bonds, but I mean, does that help his eye, his hand pan speed and his, his eye to bat con- and all that. And, and, and the guessing game, the, the chess game between the pitcher. No, it doesn't help his brain, but for a pitcher, I mean, you, what, what you think about whenever, think about it whenever. And I know bum Gardner for the giants, he just went out as well. I don't even fuck with baseball, but I, I, I I'm aware of that. But I just know when I did fuck with baseball, whenever I would see a young stud, Right, a, a young a, a young ace. You you. It was just always immediately like, oh, pitch count. Like, oh, like, well, this ain't gonna last. Like, yeah. he's throwing fucking fuel. Yeah, like, how long yeah, is this yeah. gonna last? Definitely. Yeah, because we all remember that movie with the Cleveland Indians with the cat uh, Charlie Sheen. How he was just throwing the heat. He was yeah, whiskey, wild like, thing. Yeah. Wild then thing. Then his stuff got chipped up. Then it was different. So you're right. It's game enhancing drugs and LeBron putting on seven pounds in one game. How does that feel? Like that's uncomfortable. Have you ever like eaten too much? He must have taken one or... big ass shit after that game. <laughs> I don't know why I keep going back to that, but but I mean, just like I I, I don't know. I like again. I think they all. I I remember Dwayne Wade five or six years ago. It was reported. They had to report it because it was obvious. Yeah, he had that file down bone growth on his jaw yeah his face was looking hella weird like the it, blowfish face come yeah. on man that's yeah. just it's just obvious they go down to miami mm-hmm. and they do their south beach diet man it's the real south Beach. hey steph needs to get on that shit right now get that knee right baby yes. take whatever go see victor conte or whoever <laughs> it is i keep butchering that dude's name y'all know what i'm talking about balco mm-hmm. um but anyway cleveland came out and smacked toronto they came back and, and, and lebron had a monstrous game 35 and 17 the other night and everybody's like oh kind of no 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 pump the brakes man toronto was in the third game in four nights and Eddie, if you watch basketball, if you're a basketball head, I don't want to hear it, dude. When a team is playing the third game in four, in four nights, that like that's that's a scheduled loss. Like you can win, but the, you're, you're it just that's one of those tough games. So I really discredit that win a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, and then looking at a possible first round matchup for LeBron, you're looking. At, it could be, and it's very. Uh, it could move, but you could. It could be Washington. It could be Indiana, and it could be Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm just excited for the playoffs. I'm going to cover more games and more series as, as this goes on. But Washington kind of reminds me of like the kid that always talks shit and someone fucking knocks him out or lights him up and he gets up and he still talks shit. Yeah, the Swinsons uh, or the um, remember that cat Dwayne back on the schoolyard? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that, to where you could do whatever you wanted to them. He might cry and wipe his nose off, but he's getting right back up for more. Yeah. And after a while, you're like, man, just chill. Like, There's just, something to be said about uh, it, but I think that at some point they're going to have to mature, and I don't think they're an easy out for anybody. Okay. Um, Philadelphia, I feel I like. like them. I, I, yeah, I like them. you like I, them? If, if I was LeBron, and I'm not by any means, but that seems like a very attractive setup. Um, East Coast still. Philly's pretty decent. I know a couple people from there, whether whatever, but I mean, you're LeBron, so you're going to have a very nice setup. Mm-hmm. And team wise, that looks more attractive to the, me than. The, the, I, I see what you're saying. My thing is, is that Ben Simmons, you're taking the ball out of Ben Simmons' hand. I mean, if LeBron's willing to play off the ball, it's kind of the same thing with Lonzo. But the, Le, Ben Simmons is kind of a LeBron clone, a young LeBron clone. So, but here, here's the thing: is that what I found interesting with with the Sixers is they're fourth in defensive rating. Mm-hmm. And fifth in pace played. So I'm not saying they're the Warriors. Obviously, they don't have the shooting. But mm-hmm. stylistically, they're kind of mimic that 
that style as far as that they play a faster pace and yet they still play good defense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think that's an interesting matchup. Ben Simmons, okay, no one can stop LeBron, but mm-hmm. you can put Ben Simmons on LeBron for 40 minutes and, and you could fare probably pretty well. And you're probably going to have to make LeBron work mm-hmm. on the other end as well. Mm-hmm. And then ultimately they don't have no answer. No, who has an answer for Joel Embiid if he's Nobody. healthy? Yeah, I was watching the Hornets play the Sixers the other day. And I was very impressed with Joel's versatility. The three-point, he had 25 points, 19 rebounds, I believe. He's like a new species. We always talk about evolution. The unicorn. But he, yeah, you're right. He, he's, he's a new species on the, on the chart of development. So nobody really has an answer for him. I was checking out Redick as well, too. It's kind of funny. Uh, he's actually number seven on the most hated college players list of this thing that I was reading mm-hmm. because he was really disliked. But I think that he still would get ticked because – Right now, I consider him like a B player, but it would sh- be shitty to be a B player when you know you used to be an A player. Because back in college, how would you transition that, do you think? I mean, not... That's where some guys don't make it in the league. Mm-hmm. They don't make it. But but Redick, is, he's still a, a floor spacer. He, he's still one of the best coming off screens. It mm-hmm. gave him $23 million for one year. Mm-hmm. And... That's I'll, I'll bring. I was going to save this for later, but let's talk about this now because it, it kind of goes back. It, here's what I was thinking about the Richard Sherman signing, and that was a, that got a lot of media coverage. And then let's go back to Reddick, 23 million, and yes, he does fit schematically on the floor as a shooter. Mm-hmm. But there's also the argument that he's a vet and he's a pro. He's 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 one of the pros. Pros. He knows how to eat. He knows how to prepare. Yep. He knows how to watch tape. Mm-hmm. So what value does that bring to a young Sixers team beyond just his shooting? And that's what that's how they justified paying him twenty three million dollars. Mm-hmm. And that's also kind of what San Francisco is saying with Sherman. that He's going to school these young cats in the, in the secondary. Mm-hmm. And the question that I thought about is and I'm, I kept going back and forth. I don't have an answer for you in which sport, football or basketball is a, a veteran guy of more value. Can he help your young player? I would have to say basketball simply because the numbers. There's less people on the team, therefore mm-hmm. impact would be greater. You know, if there's 10 people there and two of them are very strong, that's a lot different than 56 people there and then a couple guys are strong. But however, you're right, when you isolate it to cornerback and secondary, mm-hmm. that's like six, seven, eight guys. Mm-hmm. And they know how he gets down. Like, he, he's definitely credible, has the experience. So it's a great question. I tend to think football has so many moving parts. Random shit. Mm-hmm. Happen. I mean, it happens mm-hmm. in basketball too. But a vet to get there and to change the culture, you know, that's what everybody's always talking about. That's a great question. I don't fully have an answer. Right? There's not. There's because I, I, I initially I thought basketball as well, but then the more I thought about it, I think that football is more right spot at the right time. Mm-hmm. Like in basketball, it only can get you so far. Like I could be a basket. I could be a savant, a genius. I still can't play in the NBA. I could be in the right spot at the right time every time. True. But in football, don't get me wrong, I, there's f- physical ability as well. But like if you, if if Sherman's like, this is what he does every time. Yep. This is his route. This is his tell. This is when it's the go. Mm-hmm. And if in five, st- I think that that can enhance a guy a little more True. than in basketball where you could say that every time LeBron's still going to give you exactly. that shoulder and dunk exactly. on you. Exactly. Yeah, and especially as a cornerback, because remember we were always teaching kids put your butt to the sideline or put your butt to the middle of the field and use the sideline as your friend. Like even basic stuff mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you can cut off sections of the field real simple with that type of knowledge that he's that he's given to him. And, and there, is, I think that the elite, the all elite guys and athletes, there is a physical attribute part where it's just like, oh, they have God given shit. But also, if you think about it, just the sport of football is so much more scheme based. It's mm-hmm. so much more what the what the play is mm-hmm. than the players mm-hmm. than basketball. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I don't know. I think that's just some interesting subject there. But that's funny, man. So the whiz or the kid that keeps on getting handled but gets up and comes back for more. You were also talking about Miami too and the casualties of war. Just looking at their squad, what it kind of reminds me of is you know, the mobster parks his car up the street and it's a real nice Mercedes, but everybody knows don't touch it. Because, mm. you know, that's that's yeah, Pat Riley. Yeah, that's Pat Riley. And, and it also reminds me of, yeah, you get your ass wh- or you beat somebody's ass at a party. But, you know, their crazy cousins might roll up next week. I think that uh, Miami's kind of like that because don't they have a dude who's a black belt fighter? Like he really James looks, Johnson is n- yeah, nothing to be played with. And yeah. he looks rough, man. Go look up a picture of him. Rough. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's got to be worth 50 million dollars. I'm just off top. But I mean, bro, get a lineup, brush your teeth. Yeah. Like, damn, brother. But, yeah, I just think Miami's one of those teams, and there always will be, as long as they're under Riley and Spolstra. And the way – you know, they had, they're they one of the few teams that they orchestrate a body fat 
um, count. Like essentially, in order to be active on the roster, you have to be at this body fat. Now it varies, they take it into body composition, mm -hmm. but they're very strict in body book, very disciplined, and they're very physical. Drogic is willing, we've talked about Drogic looking like he's willing to do extra things, right? Yeah. Hassan is a bully, Hassan Whiteside, James Johnson, mm -hmm. Tyler Johnson too. Yeah, he has the yeah, prototype of. Remember, you were talking about the the gym dude who kind of has the red headed, lumbering movement, mm -hmm, just his money mm -hmm. from certain spots, and you can't really stop it. You know, he he kind of has some of that swag to him a little bit. Um, Olenek, James Johnson. Olenek is dirty as hell. My yeah. God, Olaf, how could I leave Olenek out? He is the he is like the front line goon squad. Like he's who you come <laughs> in to collect. He collects the debts like off off jump. But but um. Tyler Johnson is absolutely the white boy in in the clique of black dudes, and you know he's willing to do the most to yeah. like kick it with the black folks. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I, you said it, he even like started missing teeth. Yeah, like, you get that filled in. He like has a whistle, but and then they have um, Richardson, the kid Richardson. So they're very physical, and I'm not saying that yeah. they would beat uh, Cleveland or any of these teams, but that's one of those teams where you're like, eh, you don't really. Besides the nightlife too, you may have a young buck going down there. Some of these fools, J.R. Swisher, the Henny God, yeah. he has a series in Miami. It could yeah. be problematic. Like he could be they could find him just passed out on a beach with dj Khaled. like another one <laughs> another one <laughs> yeah they could set you up miami is definitely and they have I, I was reading some stats to where in comparison to other teams they have really maintained their record very nicely even when superstars have come and gone they're an oiled machine yeah yeah they're an oiled machine Things don't really change i think specifically some people argue how to build a team through tanking but the heat are now 54 and 28 in the last 82 games this was a couple months back and that at some point, people will take notice of that the concept of tanking is not always the only way. You can also have a well-oiled machine like that. And when you're talking about body fat composition, my grandfather was in the Air Force, and he would always ask me, what's your weight? What's your weight? Hmm. Because in the Air Force, you can't be a big, because I asked my granddad, "Is were the real buff dudes back in your time? He's like, oh, hell no, because that's extra weight on the plane. So you weren't allowed to get on the plane because that would increase your chances of it crashing. You, everything has to be calculated to the T because, you know, the bombs weigh so much, the supplies weigh so much. Right. So right. every soldier making weight was like your life. So you can tell they have some militaristic ideas, though, that, that definitely transfer. You know? No, I, I, and I I'm envious of it because when I started coaching and, and you in it, what was if you you're in a I've basically felt the situation, obviously, at the lowest levels. But when you only have so many athletes and they kind of have control, the inmates run the asylum, if you will, because it's like my, my my two or three kids that were actual athletes. Could I really dog them out and like not play them? We would just get trounced. Right. It was there's no there was no possible way of doing that. Right. And Miami, along with San Antonio, are one of the few organizations in professional sports, the Patriots, where it doesn't matter. Like, if you don't follow our universal code, code, you're, you're, you're fucked. Mm -hmm. And so that builds, that's why you see people come and go, and they stay where they're at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so man, much respect for Miami. They've definitely kept it above, kept the ship floating, even in times of difficulty. Um, wanted to just speaking about some things. I was at the barber shop the other day, and some of the shootings that have taken place recently were pretty miserable. Out in Sacramento, there was a uh, protest before the game. I think it was Sacramento, and remember who they played the other right, day? Right, but I remember the fans Hawks. couldn't get to the arena. Yeah, it, yeah. It, the gym looked heck of scant. There wasn't a lot of people in there. But the one thing I found interesting about the video was they fired 20 shots, and the lady then followed up with let's not get back up he may be faking and then they also asked are you okay i'm a gun owner and hopefully i'll get to show you all a few things that i've got eventually but as a professional asking someone if they're okay after you fired 20 shots <laughs> it just seems ridiculous like he's like, oh yeah i'm cool i'm fine and they're shooting 45 caliber rounds like these are thick slugs mm -hmm. like one of uh, it doesn't even make any sense to me so i don't want to go get political or nothing but that was kind of the highlight of the Hawks in Sacramento. I was thinking about Vince Carter and the Fountain of Youth. You know, he I wonder what he's taking. He's know? got fucking hollow bones. Yeah. He's How got the fucking hell is hollow he doing bones. This? And he's um, never really had an injury. Yeah. Like the you a high flyer like that, they always their knees always go. Like mm -hmm. if you you're a dunker like that, the yeah. thing that the thing that struck me about Vince in his prime, he is without a question to me the greatest dunker of all time because he all did right. it in game. He could do it any either way, and he could go off two feet. He could go off one foot. But the one guy that has this this trait that he had 
is Zach Levine, and and this is po- this is pre knee injury. I haven't seen him lately do this, but he doesn't. When you jump or when you go in for a dunk, all guys have that dunk face, right? Yeah, the signature yeah. dunk face where your face is under duress. You're you're <laughs> tensing your body. You're pushing yeah, one out, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, there I go again, but. <laughs> You're under duress. Vince would elevate from the free throw line, and it would be like mm-hmm. he wouldn't. His face <laughs> wouldn't even un- come under strain, dude. It was fucking wild, and just his gliding. And I remember so many dunks where it appeared like it was gonna be a layup, mm-hmm. and then it would be a dunk, yeah. and you were like, "Oh my god!" You pull that off, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, man. He always still reminds me of Roy Jones. I see them as the same person. Like mm-hmm. I think of Vince was a boxer. I think Roy's more cocky, but go ahead. Yeah, right. Well, if you feel me, I just think they have some similar. Um, things going on there and you're still not with me you don't think brian mcknight and lamarcus aldridge what in the <laughs> fuck is that was the reach of the week yeah, that was say, the reach of the week look into it i did some whack brian Google mcknight surgery. and marcus aldridge they, there's a connection there so i'm gonna challenge you all to find that connection i promise you there is one okay. I'm, not, I'm not gonna speak on it you're always shutting me down but someone's gonna find it <laughs> okay I'm okay sure, sure. okay lamarcus oh, what I, but what i tell you he texts me this right he goes lamarcus aldridge looks like brian i said lamarcus aldridge looks like the crack of my ass <laughs> I was, he was he was giving he was dropping like 32 on us at the time of the tech so yeah. i was like you know i felt some type of way <laughs> but um but yeah man so a little bit back to the western conference and the warriors obviously so this this first round opponent becomes of the utmost importance now minus one of our mvps um i was looking at the standings and things are things could change on at the moment i know minnesota lost it t- with the sixers today Mm-hmm. But it looks like with Minnesota's schedule, they're going to play their way up into probably the fifth seed or sixth seed. Mm-hmm. And so the set, the second seed is where the Warriors will stay, and they're going to play the seventh seed. And that looks like it will be either San Antonio or Utah. Okay. Um, okay. And obviously we've talked about Kawhi. If Kawhi's not coming back, give me San Antonio all day. They just don't have the athletes, man. They really don't. I know they beat us the other night, but that was a lackluster effort minus Draymond, Katie, and Clay. Um, yeah, and when you talk about the Jazz, there was a real good article written about you know four or five reasons why the Jazz will make the playoffs. Talk about Donovan Mitchell, his contribution and creativity, his smoothness, and how he stepped on and been a big you know spark plug for the squad, and also the pick and roll with Gobert and how just with his wingspan, I think it's like eight feet. Yeah, or something. no, he he is. I have no problem with Rudy Gobert winning a defensive player of the year. I don't think he will. I don't think he played enough games. Mm-hmm. But if you watch the game, it, it, it the numbers don't do it justice. I'm sure he leads the league in blocks or he's right around there, right? But his effect on guys, they head to the paint. They're like, oh, I'm not going to do that. And they just like <laughs> – they just <laughs> flip a bitch real yeah, quick. Yeah, like yeah, his yeah. presence <laughs> – and then even if he's and then even when he's not in there, sometimes you see guys like not realizing he's not in there. Yeah, because he swoops in heck quick. Dude, he's he is the it's like a premier. It was like some type of right, right, and he he down. still he has a little bit of that soft Frenchiness where and he, and he try, I think he tries to be a little extra aggro, like I don't care, I am tough, yeah, you yeah. know. But it's we ain't buying that, dude. But 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 I I am buying his presence as a he is a real presence. Mm-hmm. Quinn Snyder could win Coach of the Year. He's okay. a great coach. Mm-hmm. So they have a bit of that discipline in Utah. That's one of those teams where there's universal rules. Yeah, and you think about it, we're going to do a segment here about what if they played like the mascot and just their name Jazz within itself, you know my love and affinity for for uh, music. When you put these people into different models, yeah, Quinn would be similar to like a Dave Brubeck, someone who was considered a concert jazz artists they weren't necessarily known for their improvisation but they wrote scores like they wrote long masterworks hmm. hmm. so dave brubeck people think he's kind of whack he wrote you know different tunes that are kind of poppy but the sheer a volume of stuff that he put out was insane hmm. but yeah but back to the jazz in utah i think just utah in general it reminds me of food with no flavor and you look about at the jazz back in the day. It'll get you full. Yeah, right. It'll get you full, but it's not tasty. And, and that was kind of the third point they were making in the article that it doesn't look good. Right. But it's consistent. You know? Right. Like they, they do some things well. I think that the, it, they're similar to San Antonio where they're disciplined, right? Mm-hmm. You're, they're not going to beat themselves. They're going to be disciplined. And it's going to be a slow grinding series, which is going to require discipline from the Warriors. They can't be loose with the ball. And they can't make a lot of mistakes, but I think it may be healthy for them to have to dial in and focus early on in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Where if it was, let's say, the Clippers 
or Minnesota. It's going to be an offensive battle where it will get loosey-goosey. It may not actually simulate true playoff basketball down the road. Mm -hmm. And I want to recant his statement. I, I think in the last pod I stated that when Nick Young gets fired up, it looks good. I kind of want to put some qualifiers on that because I can see why you want to punch him in the face. Dude. His body language, it's so lumbering, and it's like his ass is real big and his hips are real slow. Like, it doesn't make any sense to me. It's almost like, like remember once we were trying to teach Ali how to fire off the ball, mm -hmm. and it just bothered me to no end, because I'm like, you're fucking amazing. He had stiff fast. hips. Yeah, he had why stiff hips. Yeah, and I, I see kind of the same thing with him. I don't know what it is. Or it's probably an effort thing. Like, he's like, oh, if it's not about me, I'm not trying to mm -hmm. F with it. Mm -hmm. and I, I can kind of see mm -hmm. that. You know, on defense, like a quick hand check and then letting the dude shoot, like that just looked real whack to me. It, it, yeah, he had, a, he had a nice game the other night. And he mm -hmm. will see, he actually, I feel like he damn near listens and watches some of these videos, man, because he <laughs> literally was hustling and, and doing things last night. And, and he was fired up for one reason. But we, we go back just to back to our, our Spurs, our Heat, our Utah, those universal mm -hmm. systems. Mm -hmm. Like he ain't a player. Player, right they seek out certain players nick young don't fit in one of those it's just it doesn't matter how talented you are and the warriors it works for you because sometimes it's kind of like the dallas cowboys jerry jones the warriors are kind of this this uh ownership they're kind of showing where like we're willing to take on a javel a mm -hmm. nick young if we can extract that talent and it kind of limit their mistakes in there and deal with their quirks. Yeah, and that brings up the concept of negative reinforcement. People use this term incorrectly. What negative reinforcement is, if you were to put a frog on a hot plate and then you suddenly slowly release that charge, that would be negative reinforcement. So negative means you're taking something away and reinforcement means you're increasing a behavior. So with JaVale and with Young, when you see them like crashing into somebody and hurting someone or not playing any defense or having a mm -hmm. shitty attitude or doing some something off the court that's hella whack mm -hmm. i think they operate off of negative reinforcement you want to kind of take something away from them in order to increase their performance mm -hmm. i think that might be when you're talking about that extraction idea mm -hmm. you let them be themselves but you you don't add too much mm -hmm. you kind of try and see what you can pull a little bit away from like you know mm -hmm. just come home at you know, 2.30. Right. You know, don't come home at 4 a.m. You know, you try and put small... Right. You, Nick, you you can shoot it whenever you want, mm -hmm. but you can't take more than three dribbles and shoot. Yeah, yeah. you know, it, right? Like, as an example, to limit yeah, yeah. and try to reel them in. I, I, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, I, I think I think that to... I think that you need to tr ex experiment with different ways of motivation because okay. we think... I think I get I get rigid in who what the way I think I should coach a player, and sometimes it's like nah man fuck that, or sometimes it's like all right all right let, let's let's pat them on the back, yeah. and kind of surprise them keep them guessing because then because you know that the, you get tired of the same voices you know you're gonna get the same lecture what if they you know you're gonna dog them out I think Kerr does this well I've seen it where Draymond knows he did some reckless shit and he comes to the bench and he's ready for it and Kerr's like. Right away, way to go, big boy. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. <laughs> you remember what this fool it seemed to be heck of bent at their parade a few while back, and they're like they didn't want to get this nigga the Warriors, yep. <laughs> right. <It's such laughs> Kaz, nope. I love situations like that. I've been to a lot of plays and a lot of church events. Church is the best for this. When you're like, please don't give Sister Johnson the mic because you know she's mm -hmm. about to say something stupid. Mm -hmm. You're just sitting there like cringing, like. Oh, that's the best. And I, for whatever reason, I, I, I really enjoy those moments. I know like some of some of <laughs> what enjoy these moments? Yeah, like 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 but you know how like a lot of people they go it's cringeworthy or they have to look away. Yeah. You know, if you if you pan through the room and people you know how people are like and I've seen you look yeah. away in certain like yeah. at, at the school oh, yeah. and I'm like yeah, yeah, I'm like excellent, and I'm like panning back and forth. I don't know why, but it's just very entertaining to me and, and enjoyable. Well, I don't feel uncomfortable. Well, no, because you kind of chill the cut, and nobody sees you doing it. We used to be in meetings together, and they were the worst run meetings on the face of the earth. And I would know I couldn't look at Aaron or Alchemy because I know that basically he was going to give me this smirk, and basically I was just going to lose. <laughs> Because people would just say the dumbest stuff yeah, just around like, it. Like, mm, oh, really? So I, I, I oh, could, really? Could look at this fool. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, uh, on you, on the got... on the comic tip though, yeah. I have I have a couple of of videos. We're gonna do this. This is a new visual segment segment of the pod. And what I wanted to do was show you a, a few clips. I don't know if you have a reaction clip 
of things that that went down that I wanted to show you. The first one is, this is a great show, man. I want to promote the show. It's mm -hmm. called QB One, and it's on the Go Ninety app, mm -hmm. and it and it's in its second season. And what it does is it follows three or four quarterbacks around the nation. They're high school seniors. And it's just great. It's really great if you love sports. Now, this coach is the offensive line coach for this team's team, and they're they're blowing it. They're, they're the quarterback's getting hit. They're false starting, and I just thought that this I fuck with this coach because it was embarrassing. But this is the level of passion that guys have. He was literally like on the edge. His his soul. He poured his soul out. <laughs> but anyway, I I, I don't want to set it up too much, but. Let's see here how long this will take. See, this is, this is doing the shit. But give me a second here to, to prop this up and play it with something. But I really, I really like, I really like that show, I and I, that. I recommend. I was on it. WYSIWYG. Anybody who needs to watch games, check out WYSIWYG. It's a pretty smooth site, and I, I saw a commercial. Yeah. Yeah. You don't care. You don't give a. You don't give a. You don't walk around. It's more. I come in and I yell at you. I get more of the same bull. This is a crucial part of the game right now. You're looking at it. It's ten nothing. Oh my gosh! Right, and so yeah, you know it's real because he's a very big man, and his voice is just—it was gone. Yeah, it was so—he was, just... was like he was ready to. It, it just was—it was powerful to me, man. And I thought it was—I thought it was funny, man. I liked it, but I also understood. Like I've been in that spot mm -hmm. where. You're just like what this is. You don't want it. I can't. What am I? What are you doing here? Yeah. It disgusts you. You've yeah. you've you felt it. The disgusting. Yeah. Um. And when he kind of bucked at the kid, and was, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? It, oh, it was it was over, man. The yeah. The t the pitch. The tone was on point. But um. The second thing was this that during that Toronto game with LeBron, Fred Van Vliet does this. 23 right there, right? He's checking his guys. He wants to dap LeBron. He messes up. LeBron's like, here. They dap each other. Look at this. He's like, oh, shit, my bad. It's LeBron. LeBron's like, no, 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 let's dap. Mm, ooh. And, and, and I just... Wipes his sweat from the... Right, yeah, yeah, the, the, the nervous, like, yeah, oh, I just did fuck. that shit, right? <laughs> but I think that that right there is a microcosm of the difference between LeBron and some of these other greats and why some people just don't like LeBron... Why he gets some flack for stuff like that. That's just, and you can psychoanalyze it however you want, whether it was, but you just would never see that yeah. from, other, from other dominant players. It was mm -hmm. just a weird situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it definitely was kind of awkward. It's like you see someone, like that forced response, like, oh, hey, Brenda, or you know what I'm saying? Like, it just but, was like hella awkward. Right, but then, but then he was like, no, 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 here, Fred. Yeah, what's yeah, up yeah. and it's like his need to be liked mm -hmm. right and, and that's an interesting thing you don't usually see that in in in, in a guy of his stature sure. right you don't usually see that you, you're like hey no no dap it up so i thought that was interesting mm -hmm. um and I'll, I'll i'll bring this question i know you have i know you have a couple of little pieces here but i saw this on bleacher report here and and i think we have the same answer because it's pretty obvious but chance was Chance the Rapper was talking about Kanye would do all a lot of cool rants to people about how Chance was the Steph Curry of rap. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, who is LeBron? Okay, so I'm not going to give it to you just yet. But the way that I went about going to it is with what I know about music and what I know about LeBron and hoops, who came into the game at a very young age, piggybacked people through very challenging times, put lots of other stars on... And really, anytime they do something, it's great. The only time that they've had a hiccup was due to some financial stuff and some beef with their um, record label. I would have to say the LeBron of rap has to be Lil Wayne. I mean, mm. I, I, I think it, it has to be for, for a couple of reasons, because he by himself, YCM, you know, Cash Money, Drake, all these different things, he was in the game when he was like 11. Mm. You know, so he was like the up and coming, you know, uh, monster and even I like Kanye he's like I was saying before like Dave Brubeck Kanye is great at doing concept albums I think that he's very good at streamlining song to song and making the whole album tell a story he's not necessarily like improvisational no, talent I don't believe so mm -hmm. um, he, he, he can play keys he has musicianship I'll give him that his flow is good but even his flow is not dynamic 
No. It's the same. No. But Wayne literally has pitch and, and rhythm with what he says. It's almost like he's playing a saxophone. Mm. Like, so I would have to say the LeBron of rap, just from the standpoint of who came in at a young age, created this big conglomerate, brought other people along with him. So same thing, D-Wade. They loved him, Bosch. then they hate him, then they love him again. Yeah, D-Bosh okay. Bosch and okay. Wade would be the um, Drake's. Mm -hmm. and the other people that he put on. And mm -hmm. it's like they forgot about him. And the only reason we forgot about Wayne for a little bit was because he had that beef with Baby and, and you know, not paying him and owing people money and all that stuff. So that, that was my take. I don't know if it's accurate, but I think the LeBron of rap like okay would would be Wayne. I I cuz I did that didn't I immediately I just thought Drake. Okay. And 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 why okay. and why I said that is in, is because that I think it's like to me, in Main Street, now don't get me wrong, I know that there's a huge underground scene and music is very subjective. Mm -hmm. But as far as mainstream pop rap, he, he's really, un, he, he's, he's the champ. Drake's the champ, right? He's the brand. And, and, and right? And, and yeah, and he's taken it beyond music, right? Into branding, into other areas. And he's kind of gets, he gets hated on because he's kind of soft, right? He's yeah. he's suburban, All right? right? Yeah. And not that LeBron is suburban, mm -hmm. but back to what I was just bringing up with the dap from Fred Van Vliet, mm -hmm. right? He gets hated on because he doesn't have the killer instinct of a Kobe or a Jordan. Just like yeah. Drake necessarily doesn't have the killer instinct, but he's mm -hmm. oozing with talent and he mm -hmm. wants to be liked. Yeah, nice, the Degrassi. No, I'm with you. Yeah. Um, and speaking on Drake, watch that walk it like I talk it. Walk it because Drake is looking crazy. I the love long, the, the long hair. That's an excellent look right there. Some bull, um, who's that? Joe Cocker or, or somebody. But right. yeah, Drake, he's obviously a very humorous cat. Um, you can tell he doesn't take himself too seriously, which right. I, I definitely respect. But that's an interesting perspective. That makes a little bit more sense because even with Wayne, um, I guess he'd be removed. He'd be kind of a little bit further. But for the branding and the flash, yeah, he, that's, that's right. I would sense. look at I would if I was equating Wayne, it would be someone that 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 fizzled out too soon. Who would it be? But he's not. I mean, I yeah, know no, I, yeah, I don't. He but, could no, still. But he's. You, but on um, you're right. Um, kids nowadays, they don't. Well, they don't know anything. Anyways, mm -hmm. In mm -hmm. my opinion, mm -hmm. but if I'm just telling you from a musicianship standpoint, if you put on a beat and you have all these people in the room, the talent Wayne is making it do something that no one else thought it could do. Hmm. You know, I mean, people have bars; they spit quickly. Wayne, Wayne, Wayne so so maybe he's like disgusting. Iverson. He's like Iverson oh, yeah. because he's he's just a God given talent. Yeah. But did he did he did he grow and make the right moves to prolong his career? I don't know. I don't know. No, but no, we, no, I'm with you. No, but um, with you. Mm -hmm. so you want to jump into jump into these falls yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So I was looking online, and it's called um, I don't know, Twitter fails or something like that. Y'all know I'm not tech savvy, but these things were just mad funny to me because it's just people. It's called instant karma, to be more specific. I'm, I'm a big fan of that. This is my favorite right here. So the little oh. kid chooses to cheat. They're doing a little thing with the baseball. Okay. Face down, ass up. <laughs> <laughs> this one comes in for the win. I like this one, too. Oh, no. Oh, gets loose. <laughs> hey, who is Get this em. guy? Is this freaking... Um, John Lynch or something? Who does this? How is he so prepared? Oh, that was that was <laughs> right? that was an excellent hell yeah. yeah that was great. that would have made my week if I seen that. So yeah, that that was real funny to me. I, my favorite probably was the the dog getting loose because I tend to think maybe leave that dog alone. But then mm -hmm. once because you already know what it is, once it's strong enough to snap the little thing <laughs> you get the arm. We've all seen the yeah. police videos where the person. Yeah, just I don't like, play with the dog shit. They're taunting. I used to throw rocks at beehives. Psst, and I and sure what? enough I've been stung probably over like fifty times, man. Oh. I used to really throw them. Crazy story. Don't know if it's true or not. There was this dude in Texas who was a millionaire and they told him, Don't clear off this ancient burial ground of these Native American people. Just keep it as it is. Granted this is your property, but don't clear the area. This fool loved NASCAR racing. So he decided to knock down all the trees, all the wildlife, and build this little track that he could take his card on. Hmm. How come this fool supposedly left one tree and it had this rare version of African bees? He hits the tree, goes unconscious, and I don't know if it's folklore, but the bees swarm him, end up getting inside of his lungs. He has to drive himself to the emergency room. When they do the x-ray 
all you see is swarms inside of them. Oh, he's dead. Yeah. Well, now he lived. Jesus. He lived, but they told the man, don't mess with this Indian burial ground. You can right. do whatever you want. Right. Just don't mess with this. So with you throwing the rocks at the bees, at least you didn't get back. Yeah, I loved kid. playing with fire as a kid, man. <laughs> I and I've, I didn't stepped in hives and all that adrenaline rush. Think, boom. Oh, it dropped. Uh, Just, crazy. it was sensational. <laughs> but, uh. But yeah, man, uh, you know, I think we'll, we'll probably wrap this one up here. Episode nine. I thought it was decent. Hopefully this video will come out proper and we can get this out to y'all with some visual stuff behind it. Again, we're still figuring out. There's always something. There's so many technical hardware issues and stuff like that. But I think we're finally getting it locked in. So um, appreciate y'all checking out episode nine.